All right, Shalom, all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Wabrakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like. Pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well, you men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women and children as well, and the water to Yahweh Shai. Because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel, none of this would even be possible. Okay. So I have an article pulled up here. FEMA smart guillotines placed in FEMA internment camps. Now it doesn't show the picture because I have this article downloaded. But I do have a picture here on my phone. Get you a good view here. of the smart guillotine. So this is what Esau is going to use to try to bribe, really to force people into the bark of the, uh, the beast, okay? So let's go into it. A United States Air Force G-17 cargo plane arrived at Andrews Air Force Base loaded with crates of smart guillotine, says a White House insider speaking under condition of anon anonymity. anonymity. <laughs> However you say that word. Basically to remain anonymous. The technologically advanced guillotines, he said, are being manufactured in Beijing before being flown exclusively to U.S. air bases. Then the military distributes the guillotines to FEMA camps nationwide. He said the smart guillotine project was commissioned in 2011 at the request of former President Barack Hussein Obama, who had hoped during his term to declare martial law and use the deadly apparatus against patriots and freedom fighters that the challenge that challenged his one world government agenda the guillotine he added is the ideal method of execution for instilling fear among the masses and that shows you there that we are not the same as these Hamites. You had a lot of Israelites who were looking at Obama like he was one of us. Okay? He's a heathen. The guillotine gained popularity during the French Revolution. The device consists of a tall, upright frame in which a weighted and angled blade is raised to the top and suspended. So again, here's a picture of it. So let's go down some more on this article. The condemned person is secured with stocks at the bottom of the frame, positioning the neck directly below the blade. The blade is then released to quickly fall and forcefully decapitate the victim with a single clean pass so that the head falls into a basket below. And when people see other people go through that, that is going to put them in straight terror, okay? And don't get me wrong, you know, these guillotines do look fierce. But we have to uh, put our faith in Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, okay? Seriously, we have to put our faith in Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. We can't waver, you know, coming into these times, man, having a, uh, a wishy-washy spirit, the Lord's not going to be with you. You have to have that faith. Back to the article. The smart guillotine retains the basic design while adding several scientific advancements. For example, the headrest has motion sensors and pressure plates that detect the presence of a human neck. No operator is needed, so that's what it's coming to. No operator is going to be needed 
to really um, control these guillotines. Hence the name smart guillotine, right? A computer drops and retracts a razor sharp weighted titanium blade, which our source said can severe several hundred heads per sharpening. If a person resists, arm and leg restraints spring forth from a recess from recess compartments, rendering the victim immobile. Moreover, the smart guillotines employ biometric scanning. So this is important because it says here, more, moreover, the smart guillotine, the smart guillotines employ biometric scanning. And you know what plays in the biometrics? The bark of the beast. Okay. The all, so to speak. The times that we are uh, faced with which is really just bringing the end of this kingdom, a lot of fear is going to be used to try to um, induce the plans of the elites of this world, all right? So with biometrics being placed on these smart guillotines falls hand in hand with the bark, okay? Moreover, the smart guillotines employ biometric scanning, including facial recognition technology, to exonerate persons mistakenly placed on a guillotine for execution. So that works hand in hand with the bark. So let's say you have the bark, okay? You get placed on the guillotine, the guillotine may not come down on you because you're, you're marked as uh, one of the people who are of the society. Because to not take the bark when it comes, well, guess what? You're going to be deemed a threat. You're going to be labeled an outsider, an outcast. You're not going to be in their database or their system, so to speak. So that guillotine will see through biometrics once it scans you that the bark is not in you, that blade come down upon you. All right? This is, this is what Esau is preparing this is what esau has set up now they're not going to just flat out tell you that this goes hand in hand with the snake venom injections okay they're not supposed to just give you every single you know part of their plan they give you bits and pieces all right but if you have the eyes to see you can see that these smart guillotines go hand in hand with the bark which go hand in hand with the snake bite, the, the, you know, the snake venom, okay? Where was I at? Moreover, moreover, the smart guillotines employ biometric scanning, including facial recognition technology to exonerate persons mistakenly placed on the guillotine for execution. The deep state and by association FEMA Recognize that some of its own people's heads might accidentally wind up on a chopping block. They had to devise a way to stop the blade from lopping off friendly heads. So if you don't have the bark, you're not going to be considered a friendly head. Okay? If you don't have that snake bite injection because of uh, Judgment 9, all right, you're going to be deemed an enemy so when a person is face down waiting for the blade to fall the computer scans the face and you better believe that computer is also going to scan whether or not you have the bark okay and the reason why I'm saying the bark the reason why I say these things is because you have something known as an algorithm that picks up on on certain words and phrases and as much as brothers play, uh, brothers pages have been getting clipped, you know, suspended, we're just trying to use wisdom, okay? Because of course we can just out front just tell you these things, but we're fighting against a people that ain't fair. So, so we have to somewhat play their game while bringing out this wisdom, okay? 
bringing out this truth. Back to this article though. So when a person is face down waiting for the blade to fall, the computer scans the face and iris. If it matches a friendly face stored in the database, the blade won't fall and the person is set free, our source said. After Obama left office, FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security kept the smart guillotine project alive using slush funds and black project money to fund 3,000 of the villainous devices, each of which reportedly cost $17 million. Okay, so each guillotine cost $17 million. FEMA ordered them from the Chinese, our source added, because the agency felt guilty about using made in America products to execute Americans. <laughs> in addition, the Chinese versions are less costly. Andrews AFB shipment over 500 smart guillotines was, distri was distributed by rail to FEMA Zone 6, an area encompassing Texas, New Mexico, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Belgrade, and Arkansas, primarily red states likely to resist a declaration of martial law or a military incursion against the American people. FEMA's main focus is on Texas, all eyes on Texas, if there's going to be a public insurrection. They know the battle lines will be done in Texas. They know the Patriot community is thick in Texas. That's why Texas is receiving more of these smart guillotines than any other state. Texas is also the biggest state, so, you know, that, that would only make sense. FEMA's first strike will occur, in, will occur in Texas, our source said. Now, whether or not that's true, doesn't matter, but we know it's coming, right? The 500 units were sent to FEMA camps near Austin, a New World Order shock training facility in Waco, and a FEMA internment camp disguised as a water treatment facility in Carrollton. All states have them, but Texas got the majority right now, our sources said. Our, our source says, so the guillotines are already here. You know, there's no need to wait on them because they're here according to this source. They're already here, man. It's just reserved for the time to come. The scriptures tell you how the Lord's sword is being sharpened and the Lord's sword is Esau. Okay. If all information is accurate, the deep state using FEMA as its agent of evil is expediting plans to herd humans into internment camps. The accusation of smart guillotines is a portent of the deep state's hatred of America. The American people in the document, the constitution, our forefathers authored to protect us from the wicked. And we understand the wicked are the, are the Edomites. Our forefathers authored to protect us from the wicked machinations of the very government we elected into office all right but this ain't our rest so you israelites shouldn't be putting your faith in this government anyway so i want to go to a different article here i'm not going to read all this one but it helps bring in the point with the smart guillotines right are you ready for judgment monitoring chip to be implanted under your skin, U.S. government scientists just reveals a new implantable chip that continuously monitors your body for judgment. <laughs> Tech news, startups news. So what's this telling you? This has to deal with uh, biometrics. And I had just read how those guillotines have biometric scanning. And they're already coming up with a implantable chip that has to do with Judgment 9. So these things are already here. It's not hard to understand what it's leading to. It's leading to the bark. All right. So again, here's a, here's a picture of the guillotine one more time. I'm going to pull out some scriptures here. It looks fierce, but we're not to fear that. You know, if we're faced with, with that, we are not to fear that. Psalms 
So I'm going to pull out my Bible here, my Bible app. And I want to start with the book of First Peter's chapter 3 and verse 17. For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. So if we have to suffer being placed on the guillotine, if that is our fate, well, at least we're suffering for righteousness sake. And not only that, it's Lord's will how we suffer. Okay, it's not up to us what our fate is. It's not up to us how our end is going to be in this flesh. Okay? Got a dang mosquito or a wasp in here. A Satan. Give me a second here. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. I'll try to stay in the spirit, brothers. Looks like a wasp. But anyway, so 1 Peter's 3 and 17. For it is better if the will of the power be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. So if we have to go through this, at least we're suffering for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. At least we're suffering for righteousness sake, which means what? There's going to be a reward because the works that we do here in these bodies follow us, man. Okay. Isaiah. This is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 59 and verse 14. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth felleth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. So that's what's happening. Esau is trying to make people pray because they're not trying to conform to this world. They're not trying to conform to the ways the elites so-called Illuminati want us to be. Many people are already talking about not taking the injection and they're not even in the truth. So there's already a lot of opposition but that same energy is why Esau is going to have to uh, bring in his troops. That's the same reason why Esau is going to come in like a flood. Because they understand it's not going to be, oh, everybody just gives in to the New World Order. A lot of people are going to stand against it. So they know, hey, if that's the case, we're going to have to come in with force. But ultimately, that's the Heavenly Father. Okay, the Heavenly Father is sharpening his sword being uh, Esau Edom. You know, the elites, their military, you know, but at the end of it all, their teeth are going to be broken. Okay, but it must happen this way for us to receive our kingdom. Yea, truth felleth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. So the Lord sees that there's no justice on the earth. And the Lord's pissed off about it, man. And the Lord's going to do something about it. All right? But right now we have to suffer and bear you know whatever things we may have to suffer. And some of us we may have to go through facing those guillotines. And you know in that situation, you know something like that happening, of course you're going to get shook up. Of course your heart rate's going to speed up. Of course your mind's going to wonder. You know, but at the end of the day, we got to have faith in our Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, that he gets us through it because that blade can come down and that blade won't even go through your neck because at that, at that very moment, the Heavenly Father give you those spiritual powers and you break out the guillotine and you start slaughtering people. 
or the Lord can have it where the blade come down and your your head actually comes off, man. But guess what? You're going to be one of the first ones on them chariots, okay? And not only that, your death's not going to be in vain because you suffered for righteousness sake, okay? So, you know, us not giving into this system, we are being looked at as a prey. And ultimately, us being looked at as prey is going to cause Esau to want to throw us in those FEMA camps. This is Revelations chapter 2. I got to keep touching my screen so my screen doesn't fall asleep. This is Revelations chapter 2 and verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. So if we have to suffer the guillotine, we're not supposed to fear that. We have to fear Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai because ultimately it's the Lord doing that. It's the Lord putting us through whatever we're going through. So if we serve the Lord, you got to have confidence and hope that he's going to have favor upon you. He's going to have some mercy on you if he puts you through a, a temptation such as the guillotine. Okay? He's not going to just, you know, allow you to serve him. you doing his will to the best of your ability on the right hand. Then he's going to throw you in a temptation that you just can't bear. It's just going to be a horrible end. No, he's going to put the spirit on you to endure it. Same thing he did with uh, all the great men before us who had to suffer death. He put the spirit on them to go through it to where everybody else might see it as horrible. But the Heavenly Father made it easy for that person. Although, well, I don't want to say made it easy, made it made it bearable for that person. But we're coming into our our um, we're coming into our kingdom. So our deliverance is going to be grand. It's not going to be like no other time. It's not like, you know, Esau is going to bring out these guillotines and he's going to kill off all those who don't take the bark. And then the world just goes on while everybody else is just in the graves. Man, that's not what happens. That's not how it's written. OK, because those who take the bark and who may not be faced with those guillotines, their life is not going to be prolonged that much longer because once that bark is here, OK, it's going to be a, a quick time. It's not going to be. You know, some seven year period where, you know, Esau has just been going around chipping people. Because if that's the case, everybody would be chipped or dead. Okay. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil, the devil being Esau, shall cast some of you into prison, the prison being those FEMA camps. That ye may be tried and that ye shall have tribulation 10 days. That 10 days doesn't necessarily mean 10 days. Okay. But the, the number 10 is a beautiful number because it also goes into the number of obedience. And we want to make sure that we're obedient to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai no matter what we're faced with. Because remember, it's all a test, man. The Heavenly Father is a man. And, and based off of his characteristics, it's, it's obvious that he's a man. Because if he's willing to put some of... Uh, those that he loves through the test of facing those guillotines that ain't no woman man that's a man and he's a man of war all right be thou faithful unto death and i will give thee a crown of life and why does it say be faithful unto death because we understand according to the scripture some of us are going to be faced with death okay it doesn't just say that just to say that Let's go to the book of Job. And, and you know, Satan's going to throw some of us in those concentration camps. And ultimately, to, to put the fear on you to give in to, uh, to his system. This is Job chapter 2 and 4. And this is uh, spiritual demon Satan talking. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life so many people are going to take that chip to save their life and spiritual demon satan knows that that's why spiritual demon satan is going to use esau as a vessel to try to put so much fear in people where they have to take the bark showing who your god is being esau okay many men are going to try to save their life by taking that chip, by taking the bark, okay? Really, I'm gonna start saying this. A lot of people are gonna start eating them chips, man. But when I say eat the chips, 
That, that's what I mean. They're going to take the bark. All right? Because they're going to try to save their life. But what does the scripture say about the elect? No matter what the elect are faced with, trials or tribulation or anything, nothing is going to separate the elect from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shine. You can find that in Romans 8. Okay? You can find that in Romans 8. Let's see, make sure I'm still recording here. Yeah, we're good. Okay, I had to make sure we're still rolling. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. So when them guillotines get to coming out, that's going to be, man. See, the hour of temptation is not just going to be what some people think. Like the hour of temptation being, you know, people just calling you out of your name and you got to bear it. No, man, the hour of temptation may be you being faced with death. You literally looking death in the face. Okay, you literally go into the last seconds of your, your time in this body. A lot of us are going to be faced with death. Now, we also understand the scriptures talk about how all of us are not going to taste death, but we still have to be mentally ready so that we can be stable just in case we have to be faced with death. Okay, because that is, that is a possibility. That is what the scriptures say. Okay. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So the elect are already going to, uh, they're, they're already set up to overcome what's coming. The elect are already set up to overcome, even the guillotine. The elect are already set up to overcome, even the missiles. The elect are already set up to overcome this world through the blood of Yahweh Shai. Through our Lord Yahweh Shai. So Kahala Yahweh Ba Show me how Shai, man. Sometimes all I can do is just say thank you. I, I don't even know what to say sometimes because the Lord's so great in his ways. All I can do is just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know? It's in my spirit. I just be like, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You know? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their life unto death. So the elect don't love their life on the death. But Satan understands many people are going to give up uh, everything they believe because they're faced with death. And they're going to take that. They're going to eat them chips, man. Okay? They're going to eat the chip. But the elect ain't going to fall for that because the elect don't love their lives on the death. It don't mean we hate living. We, we hate breathing. We, we hate nature. But our life here is really just to serve the Lord. This, this, this world right now is under the vibration of Esau. This world means nothing. Okay? This world means nothing. We hate our lives in the sense of we want the kingdom. We don't want to stay here. So if we, if we, if we don't love our lives until death, if we have to be faced with death, it's not a big deal because we don't want to stay here anyway. But Satan knows there are people that want to stay here. Skin for skin, they're going to take the bark. They're going to eat them chips, man, to prolong their, their, their measly lives for no reason. Okay? Because those who, who eat them chips, man, their life is not going to be prolonged that much longer. The elect are going to be faithful unto death. This is Revelations chapter 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of God. So those guillotines are really for the believers, man. Yeah, it's 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 uh for those who don't eat the chips, but ultimately it's for those who serve Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Esau's trying to lock this place down and make himself as the most high. One last time. So he's trying to go hard. 
But Yahweh by Shumi Shai is going to, as soon as Esau goes up for that, that three pointer that ends the game, Most High going to block his shit, man. And not only is he going to block his shot, he going to hit the ball so hard it's going to fall back at Esau and knock Esau on his ass. Okay? So the Lord's going to have these, these devils, you know, have have their little moment. But as they're eating, Yahweh by Shumi Shai is going to intervene. Eating as in as they're fulfilling some of their new world order. You know, here it is, people out here eating chips. You know, people through biometric scanning using the chips that they ate to get in and out of places or to eat here, to be able to eat there, to be a, a, a person in today's uh, civilization. You got to eat the chip, man. That's what it's coming to. So it's going to be a very difficult time for those who don't eat the chips. Okay, so we understand here, according to this article, there's going to be those who uh, eat this chip, which basically goes into uh, um, trying to find the words to say here. Basically, a uh, when, when people eat this chip, it's going to be able to verify whether this person has Judgment 9 or not. Okay? So if they're willing to do that, why wouldn't they be willing to put the bark in you? Okay? And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, beheaded by them guillotines, okay? For the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead. So according to this scripture, the scripture is telling you, look, man, those guillotines are for those who don't take that, that bark, period. You know, with the with the scriptures and you line it up to things in this world, you can extrapolate and you get the full answer, man. So them guillotines, they're not just for those who are just rebellious. You don't you don't you don't take the bark, they're gonna be putting you under the guillotine as well if they if if that be your will. If that if well, excuse me, if that be the Lord's will for you. Okay, because it's not about our will. And they lived and reigned with Mashiach a thousand years because that thousand year period is going to be a, a period where you heathens are building up our, our kingdom. Okay, but we really are going to be ruling with Yahweh Shai for an eternity, forever and ever. Which means from the point that the kingdom is set up, okay, where we're in the kingdom reigning, which the kingdom is within us. But the time where this world goes down and our kingdom goes up, a trillion years from then, it's still going to be up. And then 200 trillion, trillion, trillion years from then, our kingdom is still going to be up and ruling. We're still going to be alive. We're still going to be in power, man. For eternity. Okay? Let's go forward. So we understand, according to the scriptures, there are going to be those who are beheaded by those guillotines. And they're going to be faithful unto death. But that's okay. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 1. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them. So if you be of the Lord's elect, including the rest of the remnant, and you have to suffer that fate, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is not going to torment you. He's not going to make you suffer. He's going to make it quick and easy for you. Okay? Or he might even make it where the blade don't even harm you at all. Okay? In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and their departure is taken from misery. So if somebody who sees you on the outside, they, they see you in the guillotine, and that blade comes down and your head falls in that basket, they're going to look at you like you're an idiot, like all you had to do was take the bark. You were so into your, your stupid religion that you was willing to die? That is crazy. This guy had to go through that when all he had to do was take the bark? Well, in the eyes of the unwise, when we have to go through whatever things we go through to the brink of death, it's going to look foolish in the eyes of these people. Like, why would you have to go through that when all you had to do was just give in? All you had to do was submit. No, man. Okay, we serve Yahweh by Shemiah was shot, period, point blank, man. 
In the sight of the unwise they seem to die, their departure is taken for misery. And they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. So if we have to be put under the guillotine, we're going to be at peace instantly after that, man. It's over. If you, if you go into the guillotine, you know, and, and you know, it's, it's going to be one of those things, man. You're going to be in a lot of fear in terms of, you know, when, when's the blade going to drop? You just, you just on the guillotine. You don't know when the blade going to drop, man. You know, that on its own, is it, it is intimidating. It is. But the Lord is going to be with you if you have to be somebody who suffers that fate. To where you're going to uh, suffer it with with confidence and, and hope and joy. And instantly, once that blade comes down and the head goes into the basket, you're going to be at rest. Your, your captivity is over. Never again will you have to go through heartbreak and sadness from that point. So either way it goes, man, if you be at the elect, death or deliverance is your deliverance. Okay? And the Lord's not going to suffer you to go through what everybody else suffers. Because somebody else may get put under the guillotine and they're not the Lord's elect. The Lord might have it where their spirit stays in their body. And their head is just looking at their, their body. Or their... They're, 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 they're totally aware that their head is not on their body and they're just suffering pain. And, and most people will think, oh, well, you can't suffer pain from that point because your head is severed from your spinal cord and you're, you know, in all this madness. The Lord can do what he wants, man. Okay? But the elect don't have to worry and the rest of the multitude. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. So there you go. We might have to go through being put to death. But immortality comes right after that, man. So if we have to suffer that fate, none of us want to just raise our hand and say, Me, Lord, I want to go through the guillotine to show you I love you. That's not my spirit. My spirit is, I, I hope not. But if I have to, I just hope and pray the Lord just give me the spirit to just take it and, and bear it. And just get through it. Just get it out the way. And be with my Lord, you know? And having been a little chastised, and, and the scripture says a little chastised. If you have to go through a guillotine, that's a little affliction. Because you know what you're about to receive? <laughs> and having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For God proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. So we're going to close it out there, man. You know, Esau, he has these smart guillotines, but guess what? Fret not, don't fear. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is with us until death, okay? Death or deliverance. And we're in a good place, man. And if you have to be faced with death, keep your faith in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai at all times. Matter of fact, let me end it with this. Okay, when, when you're in fear, you got to trust in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. This is the book of Psalms. Chapter 56 and verse 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. So when you get into the time of being afraid, you get shaky. You know, your, your flesh is trying to overtake your, your spirit and break your confidence and bring your faith levels down. Put your trust in the Lord, period. Put your trust in the Lord. Okay? What time I am afraid I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. So we're not we're not to fear what what man can do unto us, because whatever man can do unto us, the Lord can make it where it's not so bad. But the Lord can also make it to where a man that can harm you, he can help the the affliction to be far worse through that man. You got to fear the Lord. The Lord controls everything. You don't you don't fear what man can do unto you. You have to fear Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. In God I will praise his word, in God I have put my trust. 
I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. So if you got to be faced with death, don't fear it. Okay, the fear is going to come upon you. Of course, you're going to get shaky. You're going to get nervous. Those are natural feelings. But don't allow your, your faith to be plucked out of you the second you're faced with death, man. If you see a fierce lion in front of you, man, you know how hard it will be to maintain your faith. But that's the kind of faith we have to have. That even if we're faced with a lion, that the Lord is with us, man. And the Lord is going to protect us, man. And that's why we do these lessons, so that we can have that 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 um, faith of iron, man, that can't be broken. All right? Verse 11, I'm going to close it out here, Psalms 56 and 11. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. So we are not to fear what we may have to suffer. And again, some of us may not have to suffer it. But it's important that we consider that we may have to suffer it. So you're mentally prepared. So you're mentally stable when it comes. Okay? So be comforted with that. And according to Mark 9 and verse 1, there are some of us here right now who are not going to have to face the guillotine. Or be put to death by the guillotine or any other way. Okay? So... Be strong, man. Keep your keep your faith in Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai at all times. All praises to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Wa Rakakwadash Shalom.